Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Davies. I'm with the Word of Faith Fellowship, and I want you to know that we are praying for you. We love you, and we're holding on for everybody that's sick and praying for everybody that's sick. Uh, we care about you, and we want to, you to know that we love you. And uh, this morning, I want to share about God being our comforter. He is the comforter. And uh, I want to start out in Matthew 24 because I think it, it's so paramount that you and I know the time that we're living in. Uh, in Matthew 24, starting with verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in place after place. And in the, new, uh, in the King James Version, it also adds pestilence. There'll be pestilence. And all this is but the beginning, the early pains of the birth pains of the intolerable anguish. We see here that as far as the timetable and as far as where we are today, we are in the birth pains of the intolerable anguish. That's what's taking place right now. This is the time period we are living in. And right now, it's so important that you and I go to God for our comfort. You know, it says... In 2 Corinthians 1, 3, Blessed, gratefully praised, and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. God is the God of all, A-L-L, comfort. There is no comfort except in God. That's the only comfort you and I will ever have that last. That's why it's so important and so serious at this time and this hour that we cry out to God, that we make God and knowing God and seeking God our number one priority. We don't want to be like the people in Revelations 9 that say, uh, after a third of mankind die, they, they refuse to repent. They refuse to go to God. And you may say, well, I don't refuse to go to God. But are you purposely, every day, seeking God? Or are you going about busily doing what you know to do? Caught up in the cares of this world. You know, the Bible's clear. If we're caught up in the cares of this world, we're in sin. Are we busy trying to do what we know to do in our own self-will, in our, in, our, in our own ability? The Bible says that's sin. That's not going to God. Are we full of fear because we haven't gone to God? The Bible's clear in Timothy he says he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But that only comes when we go to God. God is the only comfort. You know, in Matthew 16, 25, it says, For whoever is bent on saving his temporal life, his comfort and security here shall lose it eternal life. And whoever loses his life, his comfort and security here, for my sake, shall find it life everlasting. You know, I look back in my own life. And I see the things that I sought comfort in. Growing up, one thing I sought comfort in was sports. I played 12 years of sports. And in that, that was my comfort. That was my security. 
you know, a, a baby, a lot of times they'll have a, a, a blanket and that's their comfort. That's their security. They like to hold on to it. That's their comfort. That's their security. But, you know, babies, they, uh, after a while, you know, they're not going to hold that comfort. So they switch. They may go to sports like I did. And then later on in life, I went to relationships and relationships became my comfort. But I soon realized in relationships, when it broke, the relationship broke, that I couldn't trust relationships. And then later in life, I went to self-will as my comfort. Me being able to do what I know to do and having confidence in what I know to do and my own strength and my own ability. That's a comfort. And then you gather material things. And those material things become a comfort. You have a house. You have cars. You have the security of, of a job. You have a savings account. You, you have all the things you need, quote unquote. And that becomes a comfort. But God says in Matthew 16, 25, that if we try to hold on to the comforts of this world, what we can do, our, what we have, then we lose the comfort that comes from God. I say that because in this time, in this hour, it's so important that we switch our allegiance to God to be our comforter. He needs to be your comforter and my comforter. It's so paramount. In Luke 6.24, it says, But woe, judgment is coming to you who are rich and place your faith in possessions while remaining spiritually impoverished. For you are already receiving your comfort in full, and there's nothing left to be awarded to you. When we hold on to the comfort, in this case, the comfort of, of riches, wealth, what we have, we receive our reward in full. There's no place in our heart where we can receive the comfort that comes from God. We can't have both. The Bible's clear. You have one or the other. And you know, it doesn't matter if you go to church. I went to church for several years, but I held on to the comfort of the world. I held on to the comfort of what I could do, what I was confident in, because that's all I knew. And that may be all you know right now. And when that's all you know, and there's a pandemic like there is now, fear wants to hit. Desperation wants to hit. Depression wants to hit. But I have good news for you. You can cry out to God and God will hear your cries if you're humble enough to be honest, to be honest with God. I had to be honest. I had to say, God, this is in my life. I trust in my own ability. I trust in what I can do. I don't trust in you. And you know, he met me right where I was. And he'll meet you right where you are, if you're honest. We have to be honest with God. We have to mean business with God. Words, vain words don't bring comfort. You know, it says in Job, Job 21, 34, how then can you vainly comfort me with empty words since your answers remain untrue? Vain words do not bring comfort. God is the only one that brings comfort. God and God only. You know, in Isaiah 57, 16 through 19, it says, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. And it goes on and says, Because of the wickedness of unjust gain, gain I was angry and struck him. I hid my face and was angry. 
He went on turning away and backsliding. And listen to this. In the way of his own willful heart. I have seen his willful ways. But this is the good news. If you've lived a life of your own willful ways. And again, I want to say this because it's it's been true in my life. It's been true with even some now in our church. And I know in all the other churches. When we live in our own willful ways, we're not serving God. We're not serving God. I have seen your willful ways. This is the good news, but I will heal him. I will lead him also and will restore comfort to him and to those who mourn for him. Mourn for him. We have been. As a church, we have been. We've been mourning. We Mourning means going to God and crying out. Because through mourning comes true repentance. You know, when it comes to sin in your life and my life, we don't know what sin is until we go to God. It's clear in the scriptures in John that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can convict you and convict me of sin. No one else can. We can know in our mind all the things that are wrong. That's the law. But when the Spirit of God reveals sin in our heart, we can repent. That's why it's so important at this time, during this pandemic, that we cry out to Jesus, that we go to him, that we ask him, Jesus, what is my sin? What is my sin? Because when we study the scriptures, we find out that if there's any sin in our heart and in our lives, whether willful or ignorantly, it keeps us from receiving the comfort that God has for us. In, uh, in Isaiah 51, It says, and this is verse one, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, right standing with God, who seek and inquire of the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the excavation of the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and Sarah, who gave birth to your pain. For I called him when he was but one, then I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion in her captivity. He will comfort all her ruins. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. And his desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving in the voice of a melody. When we seek the Lord and pursue righteousness. What's it mean to pursue righteousness? It means that daily you cry out to Jesus. Jesus, I want to know, is there any sin in my life? What sin is in my life that's hindering me from receiving from you? Because God is the God of all comfort. And he wants to comfort you. He wants to comfort me. But he cannot comfort as long as there's sin in our heart. And we don't know the sin that's in our heart till we go to Jesus And we ask him, we humble ourselves and say, Jesus, I want to know what sin is in my life. I want to know what's in my heart that's hindering me from receiving your comfort. So important. And then it says that God will bring comfort in those desert places, those dry places in your heart, those places where there's fear and torment. God restores and brings back Eden, delight, and joy, and thanksgiving. You know, it says, I want to go to Isaiah 61. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me, talking about Jesus, to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release 
from confinement and con- condemnation to the physical and spiritually captives, freedom to prisoners, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance and retribution of our God. And listen to this. To comfort all who mourn. God will comfort all who mourn. To grant to those who mourn in Zion the following. To give them a turban instead of dust for their heads, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a disheartened spirit, so that they will be called the trees of righteousness, strong and magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. What's it mean to mourn? Matthew 5, 4. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace. That's what you want. That's what I want. That's what mankind in their heart are craving for. Grace over those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. I'm going to read that again because it's so powerful. It changed my life forever. I've shared on the radio program before. I spent 50 years on and off going to church. But when I let this word go in my heart and I realized that there were things in my life that were sin that I was not aware of in my mind. And I started crying out to God and saying, God, things aren't right in my heart. I need help. And I humbled myself. God showed me the self-will that I lived in. God showed me the things that I received, that I held on to for comfort in my life. And I was able to repent because God showed it to me. It wasn't the law. It was the spirit of the living God. And when the spirit of the living God showed it to me, he granted me repentance. And my heart changed. My life changed. And just like we're going to read again, the burden of sin was lifted. And instead of that heaviness, the emptiness on the inside, Joy came, peace came, life came, the life of God. I experienced a difference on the inside of me. It's so crucial. It's so important that all of us, me, you, all mankind, see that we need Jesus to expose the sin that's in our heart. We need him. And it will not happen until we seek righteousness. We seek him with all our heart. I'll read it again. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace. Refreshed. We need to be refreshed by God's grace. Are those who mourn over their sins and repent. For they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Comfort comes. When the burden of sin is lifted, ignorance is not an excuse. We have no excuse. Jesus died for your sins and my sins so we could come out. You know, the children of Israel, even after they crossed the Red Sea, that wilderness time was a time of testing, the Bible says, improving of hearts, whether they would really seek God or whether they would be bitter, resentful, complain. What have you been doing since this pandemic? Have you been griping, complaining because you're closed up in in your house? You can't do the things you want to do? Or have you been seeking God? 
I can tell you, as far as our family at home, in the morning and at night, we've been crying out. And during the day at different times, we've been crying out. Crying out for God to show us anything in our hearts. Crying out for those that are under attack physically with this virus. Crying out. The Bible says that God looks for those who are going to be persistent. We need to be persistent. We need to come to God and see the the hour we're in, see what's going on, and realize it's not going to get better and that there's a God in heaven that wants to comfort. He wants to comfort you. He wants to comfort all of us. But he can't until we turn our hearts toward him. You know, a lot of people receive comfort out of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We love that psalm, but that psalm speaks of us as being sheep. You know, I looked into that and why sheep need a shepherd. And one commentary said, the reason sheep need a shepherd is because sheep are dumb, prone to wander, and defenseless. Let me tell you, mankind, you, I, all mankind, we're dumb, we tend to wander, and we're defenseless. Sure, you and I can be intelligent, we can be smart, we can know how to do a lot of things, we can be very capable in the natural. But in the spirit, because of sin nature that has been in you and been in me and been in all mankind, we're dumb spiritually. We, have, we don't have eyes spiritually to see what sin's done in our life and how it's destroyed our life, how it's he- kept us from receiving the comfort that God has for us. We're dumb. We're prone to wander, wander into various sins, sins of self-will, doing what we want to do, what we think's right, what we have a hold of, that self-will, instead of going to God. Sins of anxiety and care, sins of fear. And you can put any other sin that you may be aware of in your life. We wander into it and we're defenseless. When it comes to demon powers, because demon powers are real, the devil's real. Jesus, he confronted the devil in the, in the wilderness. He confronted him several times in the gospels. You can read it for yourself. The devil's real. He means business. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy my life. We're like sheep. We need a shepherd. The shepherd will comfort us, but we have to go to him. I see that I'm running out of time. You know, in Revelations 7, 17, it says, for the lamb who's in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, giving them eternal comfort. God is the comforter. God wants to comfort you. He wants to comfort me. But as we read, we have to go to him. We have to seek him with our whole heart. It's a serious time. We're in the birth pains. That's the timetable we're in, Matthew 24. Please go back and read that. See where we are spiritually, the timetable that God has, and cry out to God. Make him your first priority. Seek him for your comfort. 
not relationships, not things, but God and God alone. We love you. We care about you. We are praying for you. We're praying for all you that may be sick. And, and we'll look forward to seeing you Wednesday at 830. God bless.